everybody. Today we are looking at a car which is definitely the black sheep in its family. This is the impact bumper of Mazda MX-5s, the W220 of Miatas. And I'm doing my bit for the English by upsetting everybody that I encounter up here in slightly drizzly Scotland. You see, my buddy Dominic has been playing sort of automotive Scylla Black all week for me. And he introduced me to a good mate of his, Ali, who's a lovely, charming guy and is joining me for this drive. Now, Ali has a very slightly modified Mini R53 Cooper S. Lovely cars. And he did offer it to me for a review. But when I popped over to his house, I said, um, actually, could I, could I have a go in this instead? And this, it turns out, is his mother Diane's car. So I want to say a big thank you to her for lending it to me. What I didn't tell her was that the reason I want to drive the MX-5 is because everybody says that it's terrible. The MX-5 is one of those cars that very many people seem to have a real admiration for, and it's one of those sort of middle bits of the Venn diagram of automotive enthusiasts. All sorts of people have a love of an MX-5, yet very few seem to like the NC. The reason for that usually seems to be the fact that, by MX-5 standards, it's a little bit of a porker. However, if you compare it with just about any other car, especially a convertible, it's not really that heavy still. The ND was a lot lighter, and of course the NB and NA, which are very similarly related, are much lighter again, and of course they have that rawness and that specialness of being the original, in the case of the NA, and that's left the NC sort of sitting in the middle, really. Doesn't help that very many of them are the 1.8 litre petrol, which produces a pretty pathetic 125 odd horsepower. Even this 2 litre version scarcely gets something close to 170 brake, which isn't really enough to set the world on fire. In fact, it'll barely warm it up. In fact, I think this thing's about as damaging to the environment as a Prius. Possibly less so if you ask certain people. However, I am a man that likes to try things out and see what they're like for myself, because actually, I must admit, I have something of a soft spot for the NC. And in fact, I was actually planning on getting one of these instead of my S2000. Eh, true story. The good news is that because these cars are so entirely unloved, they're quite cheap to buy. You can get a good condition NC for about £4,000, and granted it might not be the fanciest or latest one, and the truth is, because I didn't really prep for this review, I don't know much about them at all. Maybe that's for the best, because the less I know, the less I'm likely to say and get wrong. Instead, that leaves me with the job of talking simply about how the car drives. And I've got to say, I actually rather like it. The steering wheel is a joy to hold, simple, thin-rimmed, not squishy and big and bold like a lot of modern BMW wheels. This particular car is the 2.0-litre, but it's got the folding hardtop. And actually, there's a lot to be said for that combination. With the top up, it's presumably a little bit quieter than with the soft top version. Now, the reason that Ali's mum picked the hard top, having previously had a soft top, is because she does a lot of longer journeys with the car. And when you're on a motorway, soft top convertibles, well, they're not the nicest place to be. I can attest to that, having an S2000 and having spent a lot of time behind the wheel of Boxsters and so on and so forth. A lot of the time you find that they're just as noisy with the roof up as they are with the roof down. Hard tops tend to be considerably more refined. Sure, there's a bit of a weight and therefore dynamic penalty for it, but actually, this car's quite engaging, quite involving, and really still feels, to me, like a proper MX-5. Now, the original cars I do know had double wishbone front and rear, and I think this one might have done away with that, possibly has a multi-link at the back. But don't quote me on it. However, it's still really nicely damped, and it's what I'd expect from a sports car of this kind. The body moves and rolls and will pitch and bob about as you're moving down a road like this. The fact that it has little to no torque, even in two litre form, means that you work the gearbox. And it's a good thing then that that gearbox is actually a real delight to use. In fact, I believe the third generation MX-5, i.e. this one, still had its gearbox in use long after the model had gone out of production, because they were putting it in the Fiat and a Bath 124. 
Apparently this box can cope with quite a bit of power. Now for petrol heady types, the one to drive surely is going to be one of the BBR kitted cars because those guys can get about 200 horsepower, if not more out of one of these, and that's without the help of something like a turbo. I've never liked the idea of turbos in a car like this because whenever I drive something turbocharged, small and light, I, I think it just doesn't work. Supercharged, absolutely fine because you keep the responsiveness, you keep the interaction. But turbos, no, that's just, that's just wrong. It just doesn't work for me. Now, of course, it doesn't scream or shout like my S2000 can, but that's because it's pretty much bone standard. There are a few odd things about the NC, granted. One that bugs me the most, I think, is the side repeaters. They're huge, absolutely massive, and for no apparent reason. the sort of person who gets their kicks from straight line performance absolutely not the car for you but it revs cleanly nicely and smoothly and I have no particular problem with the amount of power on offer when you consider the price that these now go for and like I said if you want more there's always a way to get it as a practical proposition the MX-5 has got a few good things going for it too it's not the nicest interior, but it is a step forward versus the old NA or NB. You've got climate control, and you've got your yeah, Bose stereo, you've even got heated seats, and the boot's not actually too bad a size. Vaguely comparable to the S2000, a little bit smaller, I would say. And that's impressive when you consider the folding hardtop in play. The hardtop's actually pretty slick in operation, goes down nicely and easily, and of course, electrically. And it means the NC is actually a pretty sharp looking little character. I actually think it's one of the best looking of the MX-5 family, I, I do. And I can never make my mind up whether I prefer the pre-facelift or the facelift. I'm never sure, I'm never sure. Uh, but to be in, it's not all that bad. Yeah, sure, there's some cheap plastics and whatnot going on, but again, these cars were produced as a cheap vehicle. That's that's their thing. Now, if you want power oversteer and all that sort of jazz, I don't think it's gonna happen very readily. There just isn't the grunt. I mean, I gotta say, that gearbox, MX-5 gearboxes are, are up there with the absolute best of them. It's so nice. And it shouldn't be a surprise to me because I love the way that the RX-8 drives. And that, in fact, is simply a stretched version of this platform with a fixed roof on it. I always loved the idea of putting that crazy rotary engine in one of these because I think that would just be the perfect thing, which would be such a great combination. But the little four banger does all right. And the good thing about MX-5s, of course, is they're cheap to run, cheap to service, they're pretty reliable, and if you want to do anything to them, there's almost certainly going to be a part for that, a specialist for that, somewhere you can take it. And so it does make an ideal car for sort of doing everything with, really. And in fact, even if you're considering one of these, perhaps not just as a first sports car, but a first car, it's actually a pretty high watermark. The steering is not too bad. It's got a reasonable weighting to it. it, tells you what's going on. There's even some texture coming through, which is rather a novelty when you drive a lot of modern cars. The pedals are nicely weighted. They're light enough to not really be an issue in normal use. The clutch in particular is absolutely fine, not heavy like you'd find in a supercar, that sort of thing but they're still involving enough. It's the transfer of weight in this car that I really enjoy, even at more modest speeds. I'm following some guy in a Skoda who I don't think even cares really what he's doing, but it's a nice little thing to be in. The buffeting's actually not a problem at all. We've got a little piece of glass here, which is helping keep the wind off of us, but actually I'm just feeling a tiny bit of it in my hair and it's pretty chilly out there today. It's pretty, pretty grim and miserable, as you can probably see from all the cameras, but the MX-5 is doing a great little job. I have to be perfectly honest, actually I think out of the box this car is probably a bit better set up and a lot safer to drive than an S2000, particularly an early one like mine. Those are a bit spiky on the limit, you have to know them and you have to be ready for them. I probably wouldn't be going any quicker than this in the S2000, that's 
the honest truth. So I know MX-5 people really don't like this car, and I understand why. I get it. There's lots of good things about the NA, the MB. There's lots of great things about the ND as well. Fantastic car, I love those. Good looking thing, crazy package. Mazda have done so well to actually be able to make that car at all and to keep it true to their philosophy. But there is absolutely nothing wrong with the NC. I know it's got its haters and I'm happy for them to stay hating because it means that maybe one day actually I will buy one. Might not even be for me, might be for the girlfriend because it'll be a perfect convertible for her because she hasn't really got any driving experience so she can enjoy it and then I can enjoy it as well. I'd even actually go for the hard top but I would have to go for the two litre. That I think would be non-negotiable. This is not exactly a firecracker of an engine and the 1.8 I imagine might just frustrate instead. It's damp, it's sodden and it's pretty greasy out there and even still this car is outright refusing to really move around so there's no worries about the 2 litre being too much for even a new driver. So there we have it, that is the Mazda MX-5 NC. It's not rubbish, who'd have thunk it? Thanks for watching, please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.